All right, welcome to Dojo. Welcome to Smoke Night Live, brothers and sisters. We got a killer show lined up for you guys. As many of you already know, our good buddy uh, Eddie Ortega is going to be joining us. And so uh, this will be a, a fun hour of uh, learning a lot about Ortega cigars and uh, probably a lot of other things. We got a ton of uh, viewer questions for Eddie, so that'll be exciting. Good man, good. Uh, just like uh, just like us at the dojo, Eddie's got all kinds of things going on. So we're going to ask him about about everything that he's going on. But before we get to Eddie uh, dojo, real quick, uh, we got some housekeeping to do, which is uh, the first thing is cigar barbecue Sunday. So if you're not familiar with cigar barbecue, here's what you do. You get on the dojo, starting at about 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, you smoke food, drink drinks, uh, smoke cigars. Just hang out all day with us. We've done this. This is the third year in a row. Now, the first year, we didn't have the dojo, but we've been doing it for three years. And so it's, it's a ton of fun. Uh, if you're in the Pittsburgh area, there is a uh, cigar barbecue meetup in Pittsburgh, and uh, Smokey's hosting that. It starts at 2 o'clock. I think it's at uh, Little Havana. Uh, I'm sorry. Look on our events calendar, and you'll see the location. So if you're in the Pittsburgh area, you can hook up with those guys. And then I think um, at about 4 o'clock, the Drew Estate guys come in, and so there'll be some Drew Estate guys joining the party as well. So uh, if I encourage you, if you're in that area, to go meet with those guys. That'll be a lot of fun. But you don't have to be there, and you don't have to be – here in Colorado with us, you can be wherever you want to be, just uh, do your own thing, invite some friends over and have some fun. So it's really cool, it's a good time, it lasts all day, tons of good cigars get smoked, and who knows, there could be prizes, there could be giveaways, I don't know, I haven't even thought about that yet because I've been too busy, but it's going to be fun, trust me on that. And then uh, and then the second item that we got to talk about before I bring Eddie on real quick is our... Big Memorial Day Dojo Four Troops Cigar Drive. So a lot of people have already uh, got involved, which is great. Our goal is a thousand sticks, and if we can get a thousand sticks, if we buy a thousand sticks through the Gars for Gunners program on Smoke In. Then Abe at Smoke In he'll match it. So we'll send two thousand sticks or more uh, to the troops overseas. So it's really really cool. We've done it a couple years in a row now. So uh, please, guys, uh, consider getting involved. There's a couple of boxes that you can buy on there that are as low as uh, $30. So anybody can do it. I mean, that's cheaper than a five-pack. So Abe has priced these boxes really low. All you do is you go to the, the Gars for Gunners page on smokein.com. It's at the bottom. Or you can go to Cigar Dojo and get the link there. But just go in the Smoke In, pick whatever you want to send to the troops. There's... I don't know, probably 20 different things you could buy. You buy it at wholesale, a box at wholesale. They're super cheap. Smoking handles all of the rest. They do all the shipping. At the very end, they'll, they'll send us a picture of all the boxes that we bought stacked up. And I think as of today, we had already bought uh, over 200 sticks. So 20% to our goal already, which is really good because we just started it essentially today. So that's good. And it all ends on Memorial Day, not this coming Monday, but the next Monday. So everybody you got to get involved. And the biggest thing of all, when you make your purchase, make sure you put in coupon code dojo 4 troops That's DOJO, the number four, and then troops. And that way they can track how many cigars that the dojo bought uh, specifically for this this drive, our big Memorial Day drive. So thanks to everybody who's already done it, and uh, let's get to that thousand stick mark. It's really exciting because the guys over fighting for our freedoms over there, they like to have a cigar too. So uh, let's uh, let's make them those men and women happy and do our part. And I really appreciate uh, all the support on that. So without further ado, folks, we're really excited. One of our all-time favorite cats. Uh, one of uh, my favorite guys in the cigar biz because not only does he make uh, incredible cigars. By the way, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be smoking this here in a second as soon as I bring him on. 
Uh, not only does he make incredible cigars, he's also one of the coolest dudes in the entire industry. You meet this guy in person and at shows and events. Uh, there's nobody funnier and more classy than uh, Eddie Ortega. So, hey, Eddie, welcome to Smoke Night Live, brother. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me, man. I loved, I like that introduction, man. It sounded really good. You like that, <laughs> huh? So, uh, so what, what's going on? Tell us how, how things are going with you. Not much, Manny. Uh, I just got back from a nice trip up north. We did a, I don't know if you heard about it. If it's, you've probably seen it on, on Twitter and stuff. We did the BOTL in a Cigar Inn. It was packed. It was awesome. And then from there, I just uh, went to visit some stores, did the let my, my people uh, smoke uh, dinner over in Philly. It was yeah, awesome. what's up? Tell me about that. What's the deal on that? I'm not too familiar with that. How does that work? Uh, that's uh, Anthony and the crew over a twin smoke shop in Philly every year this actually to next year is going to be the tenth year he's uh, been pulling this together it's wow. called let, let my people smoke he basically puts a nice package in where we all throw in cigars and uh, he puts in all the food I mean I think for 150 bucks you get a ton of stuff you get a lot of food uh, and this year was his biggest there was like he saw like 270 I mean it was packed and then next year, the tenth anniversary, he's planning on doing like five hundred people. So, but it was it was a great event, man. Wow, well, that's really cool. So it's just a dinner, and you get some sticks and stuff. Yeah, it's uh, but it's nice. It's fun, man. That's, they have, they have a nice uh, uh nice uh, crew over at uh, at Twins in Philly. That's really cool. So so uh, you're you you're lucky to be on the show tonight because you were there. Yeah. And now you got a big event right with Abe. So yeah. I want to thank you for being able to squeeze this in like you did and and pull it off. Really appreciate that. Uh, tomorrow I mean, you got going. You got the uh, poker tournament, right? Yeah, I, actually, uh, I had a I, I got my guy Jeff, uh, which is a rep here in Florida. Ooh. I put his name down to play tomorrow because I was actually going to play, but I mean I've been out of here all week. Right. Just got back today. I woke up today like at 3 in the morning because I, I was trying to get a standby on the early flight out of there because I got stuck in there yesterday, uh, picking up my kid, as you know, in a little while. So tomorrow I want to spend a little time with them because then Sunday we're sponsoring a big uh, golf tournament down here. So I'll be busy there. So it's been a, it's been a crazy week. It's you, been a busy week. Do you, you go? A little bit, man. Yeah, yeah. A little bit. Yeah, I'm not, you know. I know I can hit it. I just don't know where it's going sometimes. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm not that good. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I don't. I, I think it's fun too, but I'm not good at it either. But um, yeah, that's cool. So uh, now, I mean, all of the guys in the dojo pretty much are really familiar with you and your line and everything. But uh, there's probably some guys watching that might not be too familiar with with you. So maybe give us a quick overview of how you got in the biz and. Uh, and, and, and tell us about Ortega Cigars, and then we'll get into the details about the Ortega Project and some of the other stuff. But first, just give us a brief overview of Eddie Ortega and uh, how you got to be where you are right now. Uh, well, the quick overview is it's easy. I started out with Puro Seniors. I was actually married to the daughter of Rolando Reyes Senior, who died uh, a couple of years back. Um, so that was my entrance into business. Uh, he, he got me... Uh, he involved in, in, in the company he, he needed help back in the boom so that was my I, I don't go back like generations of uh, you know families and um, that's I started with Puro C News mm -hmm. after that uh, I went on my own had, had my own company and I was running real smokers I, I met up with uh, with Eric mm -hmm. he started nagging me about you know doing our own our own stuff so we started with United Tobacco, which later changed to uh, EO Brands. Launched the 601s, the Cubals, Murcielago, Mi Barrio. I mean, pretty successful lines. Yeah. Um, till just two years ago when, you know, it was, uh, he wanted to do certain, you know, he just, we, we both, you know, sometimes, you know, you yeah. just want to do certain things. He wanted to do some, you know, his own stuff. I want to do my own stuff. So, but, you know, he came out with Espinosa. I came out with Ortega. We're still really good friends. We were just hanging out, you know, this this weekend up in uh, in Philly at BLTL, and so it's all cool. And he's doing really well with Espinosa. And uh, fortunately for me, you know, my brands Ortegas are really doing good too. So uh, it's all good, man. 
or just having fun, working hard. Right. Now that's see that's really cool for me because uh, not only am I a huge fan of what you and Eric did together, but I'm a huge fan of what you and Eric have done since then. Now you guys took totally different routes. He went and like started his own factory. Yeah. Uh, you're more like a free agent kind of guy. So tell us how that works. You have all your cigars made for you elsewhere, and so you have a bit of freedom to just kind of do what you want to do. How did your your business is structured a lot different than his is? Correct. Correct. Well, in a, in a perfect world, you probably want to be like like me. <laughs> I mean, it's more like a Rocky or maybe. Ashton, or, you, you know, manufacturing cigars, having your own factories, you know, uh, create other problems. Uh, it's a much, much more involved, uh, uh, you know, it, it's, it's just, it's, it's tough. And if you ask Eric, he'll tell you, he'll yeah. tell you that, you know, he wishes, you know, he, I mean, it, it's just, it's just tough having your own factory. But um, from the get-go, that was one of the things, you know, he wanted to have his own factory. Actually, before you know, we 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 uh, went separate ways. You know, he was trying to pitch me the idea. Come on, Eddie, let's do the factory. But I just I I just manifest. It's just a different animal. I mean, yeah. it's a lot of it's a lot of hard work. It takes a a lot more. You know, it, it it's just uh, crazy. Doing doing manufacturing and having your own distribution. It's it's big headache, man. So now, like, what's really interesting to me, Eddie, is. You got a lot of crazy stuff going on, you know, with the Wild Bunch and then the Ortega Project. But the first thing you did right out of the gate was you did the Siri D, right? And it, it's it's just a solid line, the Maduro and the Natural. Was that sort of the plan? Was I need like just a base cigar that's really good that I can sell, and then I can start doing crazy stuff? Or you know, was that the sort of the strategy for you when you got going? No, ideally, I, ideally. My, my 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 initial goal was to come up with a couple of brands, solid brands, build them, you know, just make them so, uh, lo long, you know, have the brands just once. Once you create a brand, what you want to do is, you know, be consistent and just keep building the brand. Unfortunately, nowadays, you know, I, I, to tell the truth, I, I hate coming up with so many things, just like all the manufacturers. If you talk to all the manufacturers, everybody thinks that we love reinventing brands and coming up with stuff every other month but um, we don't nobody likes that I mean you talk to any other manufacturers nobody likes that the problem is that the consumer nowadays has right. a short uh, attention span and you know what they smoke today is not what, what they want to smoke tomorrow I mean so uh, if somebody comes out with something new you can't stay behind you gotta come out with something new because otherwise you you just you fall behind so it's a uh, you know, it's tough. There's a lot of great cigars out there, um, uh, and it's just hard keeping up, man. But, <laughs> yeah, nobody wants to keep coming up with limited this or limited that every other month, man. I mean, it's tough. So tell us about the Serie D line, um, how it came to be. Um, I love both of these. Personally, the the natural was the cigar for me. For a long time, Eddie, I, all I wanted to smoke was Maduros. I just dark, 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 dark cigars. Just Maduros, Maduros, Maduros. And it wasn't until I had your Serie D Natural that sort of changed my mind about lighter cigars. I, I still love Maduros. I'm smoking one right now. But that Natural uh, sort of opened my mind to, wow, you know what? Some of these uh, lighter cigars are, it, are so interesting and so nice and spicy and delicious. Tell us about the Siri D line and uh, and uh, you know a little bit about it and how it came to be and how you blended it and whatnot. The the D is basically uh, both lines are actually the same identical blends. Uh, the biggest difference in both of them and between the the, the natural and the Maddy is that the natural has got the Havana wrapper and the Maduro has got the Mexican Maduro wrapper. Uh, there's a big difference. Uh, you, you, it's it's very in that line the Series D. When you know when when you have doubts about what what a wrapper brings into a a, a cigar into a blend, uh, all you have to do is smoke the Series D. I mean, if you smoke the Maduro, it's a complete different taste than right. when you smoke the Havana. I mean, it's it's just like you know a 160, 180 turn. Um, so it's they're both a nice complex blend, uh, but using that different wrapper just makes them a a complete different different cigar. Uh, nice full body smoke. Um, they complement each other. You know, it's good. Like I smoke. I mean, 
I smoke boxes and boxes of the number seven Maduro. You know, and every so often I just got to switch up because uh, I just, I get burnt out, you know. It's good, to, <laughs> right. it's good to smoke other stuff. So I go in my Humi and, and smoke, you know, somebody else's smoke, grab whatever is there, you know, just to get something, uh, just to change it up, man, because you, you get burnt out. Now this this guy here ages wonderfully. I think, the age, yeah. I think you might have given me this in Florida the year before last, and I've just had it ever since. And, uh, man, yeah. it's... At this point, it's perfect right now. I'm telling you. What you been smoking, La Jugada? I smoke everything, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good cigar, man. I was smoking over the weekend. I smoked a couple of those. Yeah, Nelson and Danny, they're good guys, right? I was hanging out with da Nelson. I don't know, bro, but Danny's a good guy. <laughs> yeah. They're both they're both funny guys. Yeah, a good couple of good. I love guys. Danny. Danny. Danny's a good guy, man. Yeah, all those uh, the guys. He's from New Jersey up there. So you you go up there quite a bit, right? And uh, yeah. Yeah, lately haven't gone that much, but but I yeah I used to go there, and plus I grew up there, so. Uh, but yeah, I was hanging out with Danny up there. That with Danny and Eric, uh, we were hanging out up there. Right now, you, uh, you since you're kind of a free agent, do your own thing. Your schedule is probably pretty demanding. You're everywhere, right? You Arizona and flying yeah. around. You're 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 gone. You're like a rock star, right? I mean, you're you're traveling all okay. the time. Okay, put it this way, man. I don't want to be a rock star. I would love to sit home and sell cigars, <laughs> but unfortunately, man, uh, you know these events. I mean, you uh, you got to do the events. It, it's it, I mean, you you have no choice. Right. Everybody else out it's out there paving the hitting the pavement and stuff. So like you know the same the same uh, thing applies like where you have to come up with different brands. You have to do events. If you don't do events, you get you just like fall behind. It's it's crazy, uh, but uh, I would love to just be able to hang out at home, <laughs> my kids every weekend, you know. But can't can't do that, man. No, I know. So hey, here's a tell us about the Wild Bunch series. That was one of the most intriguing uh, lines of cigars. Uh, it came out in in small groups, and but it was an overall. Uh, I don't know. Was there uh, four different sets of three, right? And yeah. um, no, no, no. Well, yeah, yeah. It was four sets, because what I I did them by quarterly, but every month. So it, it was yeah, but it was really not. It, there was no separation between the. It, it, I I made them in sets because I I wanted some way of separating and and creating the samplers of the three packs. But it was basically just twelve characters, you know. But to make them bet, you know, if I would have if if. if I made a big mistake, you know, because I should have made the wild bunch just like five boxes e each month of each one. That would have made it like really, really limited, right. and that would have been like a killer. Uh, I sold a lot of boxes, and it did really great for us. Uh, and it turned that was a that was a great project. What I want to do is uh, I skipped uh, fourteen. I'm doing something nice. I'm gonna I was gonna do something nice with a wild bunch, but I what what I did was skip uh, 2014. And in 2015, I want to do something. Uh, it's not going to be as complex every month, but maybe mm -hmm. something nice and quarterly using the Wild Bunch. But so it was really how, nice. How did you come up with the uh, – so these are friends of your guys in the business that you met here or there. And did you have a blend in mind for these guys? Like this would be a perfect blend for the Honest Abe and so forth. Well, I, yeah, I, I ask everybody, every, every, uh, every one of the guys that – because it's not uh, – like each one of those – it's not, uh, it's not a specific character, but at, at least like like seven or eight of them are, and and on on the ones that I officially use that are, it's actually a, a you know living character or whatever, I uh, I got some feedback from them, uh, you know. And I originally I was gonna use the Dirty Dozen, but I got a call from Jonathan, telling me that please you know. Can I skip the dirty part? Oh, right. <laughs> so I told him, you want me to use wild? Is that okay? He goes, yeah, that's cool, man. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, that, yeah, I really – I see, I'm trying to think of uh, uh, the one – the Island Gym was the one that really matched my fla flavor profile. That was a really, really good – Island thing. Gym, Dandy, Tony did good. I'm going to say did good. There was actually, you know, all of them, man. I mean, I can't, I can't complain. I, I ended up selling for the, last year. I sold uh, like seventy-five hundred boxes of the Wild Bunch. 
I really no. dug the, uh, the art and the uh, marketing on that whole thing too. Is that somebody that you knew that did that, or? Well, Neil, Neil, you know Neil Wallenberg? No, I don't know. Him. Yeah, he's. Uh, but you know that was uh, that was actually one of the one of the only. I shouldn't have used artwork because uh, that was one of the only uh, bad feedbacks like I would get from consumers when I do events and show off the wild bunch and they look at the artwork. They think it's like a little too, uh, I don't know, like comic, you know, like comic book. Uh, so, like, if I was going to do a wild bunch again, I won't use artwork. I I'll try to come up with something else as opposed to, uh, you know, do like a Spidey, me uh, Spidey uh, Man team and stuff. So when the Master Sensei comes out, my face won't be on there. We can, uh, <laughs> we can, <laughs> we can do a dojo, bro. We'll put your face in. <laughs> you look like Che Guevara. Yeah, right. Hey, here's, here's the next thing I want to ask you about, because I'll bet you a lot of guys in the dojo may have never seen these. Yep. The minis. The minis. These are really, really cool. It looks sort of like a, like a Marlboro box, kind of, yep. and uh, just has a real short, tiny little... Yep. You're, are you still doing this project? Yeah. They, they, what I actually did, I, I, I only kept the Maduro and the Havano. Okay. And then I'm doing them the same... In a, in a, I just got the first shipment in of 30 count boxes. Oh, okay. So what was the idea behind this? You want to have something that guys could buy that they could just smoke on their lunch break or something? Yeah, but I actually thought, because uh, my idea behind that was I actually wanted to start selling those at the mass, more like mass marketplaces. Mm. Um, but it's, it's hard selling because, I mean, on small sizes like that, since they're not machine made, you know, that's still a quality cigar. And when people, like at the mass market level, when they buy those type of cigars, they want to pay, you know, 20 cents. And, and I, because they're not machine made. If I, if I want to go the mass market route with that, I will have to do machine made. And it's just like, uh, I, I don't really want to get into machine made stuff. I've had several of the minis, and they're really tasty. They're, they're nice. It's a nice little smoke, it's a quick yeah. smoke. It's affordable, so but 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 and the only reason because now what I, what I did with the packaging was put them in in uh, boxes of thirty, so it's a small little slide top with boxes of thirty because most of, actually the reason I didn't was because most of the retailers have been telling me, listen, why don't you just put them like that? Because people just want to grab singles, you know, so they'll come in and just grab as opposed to you know buying the the slide top. So, okay. um, so we'll see we'll see how that goes. You know, you have to come up with. Uh, it's easy when other people come up with stuff that works and then everybody imitates it. Right. But, you know, I like just coming up with stuff and, and see what, I don't mind being the first one, and see what works. So right. those, those minis are, right now, it's a, it's a so-so. We'll see, you know, how, how we progress with that. But uh, it's a good little smoke. And, and then the opposite spectrum of that, you just recently came out with a heavy-duty. Yep. Uh, so tell the folks about the heavy duty. It's a, it's a nice medium smoke. It's not full body. It's made in the uh, Dominican Republic by uh, Abe uh, over at the PDR uh, Abe Flores factory. Uh, it's more of a medium body because uh, I wanted to come out like with a very inexpensive. Uh, uh, the, it's a Beno 60 cigars. You get a uh, you have a. Uh, 25 by 60, 26 by 60, 27 by 60. So that it's a full bin of 60, 160, 170. The 60 retail for like in a five dollar range, and the 70 in the six dollar range. Okay. Uh, it's more of a medium body smoke because uh, I wanted to keep the low pricing. And if you try, to, if you make it more of a full body, you got to use more Lijero. The Lijero is going to jack up the price because it's more expensive. So. Uh, yeah. It turns out to be a nice, it's got a lot of flavor, but it's a nice medium smoke. Medi medium to, to full, but depends on who smokes them, you know. Right. It's a great smoke, though. I'm getting great feedback. Yeah, that, uh, uh, it's it's interesting how uh, the big ring gauges seem to be so popular uh, among cigar smokers. Why do you suppose people gravitate towards the, the big ring gauge cigars and stuff like that? I think maybe they feel they get more for less. <laughs> I mean, uh, I can't, 
you know, I, I like I've, I've smoked quite a few of those uh, heavy duty 60s, and it, and it's actually nice because I don't smoke those big sizes, but the 70s, I tried them, but I, I mean, I don't put that, I, I don't those sizes. I mean, that's not appealing to my mouth. <laughs> where, yeah. where, is, where does I don't, it, look, I don't look too sexy with those things in my mouth, bro. <laughs> where does it end, Eddie? How big a ring gauge are some of the people going to go with? I mean, it's starting to get crazy, right? Bro, there's a lot of loonies out there. <laughs> even Some of them even smoke that eight, those 80s, bro. <laughs> I mean, uh, mm. to, to each his own. I mean, I don't uh, – I, I definitely I, – I can't handle those big sizes. But, you know, you got to make cigars for the consumer, man. I mean uh, – yeah. Yeah. I was, if I was going to make it for me, it would probably be all like, like five and a half by 46. Right. Yeah. yeah, like on the dojo, on the dojo, uh, the Lancero is a re really popular size. And, you you know, if you were just hung around the dojo all day, you might think that that's the most popular size. But everybody I talk to in the industry says, oh, man, he, it's the big ring gauges that uh, pay the bills. So That's, that's what's selling now, man. Uh, everybody... Uh, Everybody wants those big ring gauges, so you're forced to make them, man. But, uh, but it's doing good. The heavy duty is really it's doing it's it's taking off nice. Yeah. Now the next the, the 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 really crazy thing that you're doing is this Ortega project, which is I think as far as I know it's the only crowdsourced uh, cigar project I've ever again, heard of. Again, man, I like being first, man. And yeah. I smoked a lot of crack this year. That's why you see so many <laughs> crazy stuff, bro. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> I this like doing it. Take some explaining now. To try to about, about the crack, about the crack or the project. Yeah, that too. Yeah, that too. No, the uh, it's almost like Kickstarter, right? Like uh, you get people involved, they pay money, and then they're essentially a partner with you in the project, and they get to help you through it. Right. That's that's exactly yeah. I mean, with, with with it's a little it's it's the same the same concept with Kickstarter, uh, where where the you, you basically got I basically like pre buying the product. Uh, uh, I, I'm not a. It, it's not something that you know. Initially, people thought that they were I needed input to help me create a brand and and you know, but it's just something that. It's it's fun. It's another fun project, just like the Wild Bunch, where I'm getting a bunch of guys together. They're gonna get a great price. I mean, for bottom line is they'll probably end up paying about 105 bucks for a box of 20 cigars. You know, the people involved in the project are gonna be the only ones that can get it. And if all turns out good and they wanna you know do it again and run the same blend and the same. You know they'll be able to, to do it again. So I mean, it's just it's fun. It's fun, man. How is, how is the how is the blending process happening? How are these guys uh, contributing to how, what you're doing? I haven't checked yet. Well, like I said, and I and I and I leave comments. You know, I'm basically going to be. I, I'm I'm not going. I'm I'm going to have just a very small input. I want everybody else to have as much input as possible. So, like, to, to start off with, I put the survey up. You probably, I don't know if you've seen it, yep. but I'm asking for the different blends, what people, so I haven't checked it, like, last week because I've been just traveling so much, but uh, I need to go in there on Monday, find out where, where, where I'm at with that. As soon as I get some uh, good ideas on the blends, I'm going to post the, the initial blends there, fine-tune them if somebody, you know, if I get some comments, and then I'm going to have five different blends made at the factory from whatever input I get. Gotcha. Once I get them in, I think basically everybody is in the part of being like a blend. There's only a few that, that took the hundred dollar five five package that, that doesn't include that, but I'm gonna send the blends out, let everybody again have input and I'll put another survey to to rate the blends and see what we come up with and uh, get a nice finished product done, man. So there's there's uh, I, I'm familiar with this, but I know a lot of the guys in the dojo might not be. There's levels of uh, commitment that you can put into, and you get different things based on how much you 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 know you put into the project. Yeah, and I mean it's I, to tell you the truth, I thought I was going to have a lot more involvement, but I mean for being the first one, it's not bad. The project ended up raising like about nineteen thousand. I got probably like about a hundred and and 20, 130 people involved. Uh, 
I thought I was going to get a little more involvement because you, you could have, you know, I had a, I had the 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 levels from thirty five bucks to four ninety, which was the Nicaraguan trip. So mm -hmm. I mean, it was nothing to, uh, you know, it wasn't. I mean, you, you weren't losing the farm. I mean, you could have jumped in for thirty five bucks or a hundred bucks. But bottom line is, the finished product after everything is said and done, they're going to have a finished box of cigar, you know, for probably about a hundred and five bucks. You know, 20 cigars, and then next time they want to run it, instead of 105, they'll probably end up paying 75 bucks because I'm going to lower all the prices just for that group. So oh. whoever they didn't get in, it's it's you know they could have had a nice, uh, nice, nice. Uh, so is it filled up? Is it is the? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. gone. So that's all over with. Yeah. Now my next project is going to be making sure everybody else that didn't get involved regrets it. So. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure the guys that are involved get get a lot of stuff and and have lots of fun so they can brag and stuff. Gotcha, that's really cool. I dig that idea. I love the innovative approach that you bring to this. It it breaks. It, you know, there's a lot of companies doing sort of different things. You know, Viaje does all this small batch stuff. Yeah. And you know, some of the some of the uh, old school guys. Maybe they don't like it as much, but I like that. I I think what you're doing and what some of these other things are doing, it adds interest and intrigue to the cigar world, and it's something different and new to try. And it's this is good. the most different I've ever seen this Ortega project. The Ortega project, yeah, that's definitely. But even that, you'll see, you'll have some guys that will want to, you yeah. know, do, do their own project. I mean, I don't mind whatever turns you on. I mean, but at least I was the first one that did it. Uh, but everybody has to have the little. Uh, I think everybody should be different, man, and just yeah. concentrate. Like I worry about my stuff. Most of the time, I don't know who's doing what, what they're doing. I, I mean, I'm not one for uh, for all the gossip out there. I just worry about what I'm doing, man. That's. But Eddie, you are extremely active on social media. I see you everywhere. I have to be, man. I'm oh. a little guy, bro. I gotta. <laughs> I gotta. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta spend uh, instead of spending <coughs> twenty grand on on advertising, you know, I can I can do a lot a lot more on social media and stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, w one thing I, 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 I've seen you posting on Facebook is the Ortega Black. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. In June, so, that's coming. Let's let's tell us about the Ortega Black because that is really exciting for all of us that are Ortega cigar fans. That's going to be a nice, nice. Uh, it's going to be part of the Serie D family. Okay. Uh, I've been working on this blend for a while now, going back and forth, back and forth with the, with the factory, and I finally uh, came up with this nice blend. I mean, got a lot of great feedback from everybody that that was testing it and stuff. Um, and I've actually gave the the production order like two like two months ago, so the, all the cigars were made, and I wanted to let them sit at the factory. I got all the packaging done, everything is done, uh, but I wanted to let them sit at the factory for like at least ninety days, uh, so they settle nice. And hopefully, I'll have it. It's a beautiful ring. The cigar is really really nice. It's right in between the Series D and the and the natural. It's got totally different flavor. Um, and hopefully uh, by the end of June, uh, we'll get it out just a little bit before uh, before the IPCPR. So yeah, I was just going to ask you: Will you is that the cigar you'll be uh, uh, sort of introducing at the show? Then I don't usually introduce stuff for the show. I I like like putting it out like like about a month uh, before, and then you know just that way by the time the show rolls around, you know it's been. It's been out there. I I don't like introducing stuff to my, to uh, the IPCPR. Okay. So you said it's in between the. What did you mean when you said it's in between the natural and the Maduro? Flavor wise, I mean, if like I said before, there's a huge difference between that that natural wrapper and the and the Mexican Maduro wrapper. The the Mexican Maduro, the the Series D Maduro has like a lot of flavor. Its its strength is actually pretty. Put you up there, depending on you know when when you smoke, or uh, and the natural. On the other hand, is you know lacks that that flavor of the Maduro wrapper, but still has a nice you know full flavor. I think the Series D Black is it's right in the middle. Uh, can you excuse me for once? They're calling me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. 
One second. One second. I'll take over from here. Eddie's Eddie's gotta Eddie's gotta take a break. So uh, in the meantime, Dojo, we got probably twenty minutes to go in the show. So if you have questions, uh, don't hesitate to ask on the Dojo. That you, if you want to ask Eddie a question, just uh, include the hashtag Ask Eddie. Um, and then we'll try to get to your questions. I got about, oh, I don't know, uh, nine or so questions already from uh, from guys that, this week that are good questions. Okay. We'll ask Eddie. The uh, Siri D. Black, I'm interested to get my hands on that. I'm sure all you other Dojo fans are as well. That sounds like a really good stick. So uh, sorry about that, Eddie. Are, everything, everything okay? Yeah, just so that everybody knows because I'm just pending, just waiting for uh, my, my 12-year-old kid. Took okay. his first trip to Washington and stuff, and I'm just pending for. Uh, I think the plane just landed, so I'm just pending to go pick him up in school in a little bit. So. Okay, if you gotta go, you just let me know. So. Okay. No, uh, yeah. in, fact, in fact, maybe right now would be a good time, uh, Eddie. I'll I'll get to some of these questions, uh, from the dojo community, so that uh, we can get those answered. And then if you gotta go, then uh, we're good to go. I appreciate your time. I really do. No, no, so, no. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Before before anything, let me give Juan Cancel oh, and, oh and Billy a big shout out out there. Those guys, I love those guys. I mean, is that who just called you on the phone? No, oh. no, but he told me he gave me a big shout out. But that's like my favorite Puerto Rican out there. The, oh. so, uh, you know, I, I got a. That, it was his birthday. I don't know if you know, but it was Juan's birthday yesterday, man. Mm. He was on the show last week. Yeah, but uh, cause but and yesterday I missed his birthday. Actually, I couldn't go. So happy birthday, buddy! You know, all the best. And, uh, yeah, he's a funny guy, man. Yeah, yeah, he is, man. Yeah, he is. All right, so I'll get to some of these questions here. Uh, uh, Mister Nine Fourteen wants to know. We already talked about the project, the Ortega project, but he wanted to know when you thought the sample blends would be ready. Um, like I said, on Monday, okay. I'm going to check the survey. Then I'll put up a, a little uh, post there regarding the what the first blends are. If anybody's got input, I'll wait for that. And as soon as I narrow that down to what we're going to do, I'm going to put them in production. But I want to let them sit at the factory at least a month. So I figure maybe, maybe 50, 60 days. We should have all, all. I should be able to ship them out. Okay, cool. All right, let's see. Uh, we got a question here from uh, Razor Pig, and uh, Razor Pig wants to know. He says, um, with all the government uh, proposals and regulations of proposals on premium cigars, what, if any, steps have you taken to overcome this? Uh, just staying in. Right now, I mean, uh, all all we all we can do is stay informed. When I, I I'm I'm on a regular basis. I I, I stay pretty much uh, in touch with uh, Glenn Loop at the CRA, uh, and just stay on top of it. I mean, ba basic. I mean, bottom line is where everything stands right now. The only thing we can do is what we're doing right now, which right. basically we're pending on the FDA. Everybody's going to that site and you know giving them feedback. Um, aside from that, oh, excuse me. There's nothing we can do. Excuse me for one sec. That's right. See, guys, when you're when you're a, a big time cigar guy like Eddie, the, your phone just keeps ringing, <laughs> and uh, so that's okay. Fernando uh, Sanchez, you finding out? Here, I'm gonna show the mini again. Somebody asked about that. Check this out. I thought he was gonna call me. Okay, yeah. So I it's like a, a little box. It almost looks like um, almost, no, like I said, almost looks like a box of cigarettes. And the. Uh, yep. I'm waiting. Let me call Sandy. I'm going to do what I'm it. Really tasty. We had a bunch of these in Vegas last year that all the Dojo crew did. Um, here's the uh, Habano. So it's just a, a a real basic little guy. It's probably uh, four by let's see. Let me say yeah. Oh, uh, four by thirty-eight. So four by thirty-eight. And it's a great little size, and they're cheap. And you should fill your humidor up with some, with them, with them, so that uh, on your lunch break, boom, you grab a. That's what I think these are perfect for. I also brought a, uh, I also brought one of the Maduros, there. So, so it's pretty cool, right? Sweet, sweet packaging, marketing. These, uh, I know a lot of you probably haven't seen these. So if you get your hands on them, 
buy some. Throw them in the Humi. Yeah, the, there was one called the Full Body. Now, I think Eddie said he wasn't doing that one anymore. There was one called the Full Body initially, and that was a pretty strong version of this. But I, don't, I think he's, okay. so he's just doing the Habano and the Maduro now. So uh, there you go. So hey, guys, remember, while, Eddie, uh, while Eddie's talking, let's sell some more boxes on our Dojos for Troop Troops thing right tonight. We should try to get to... We should try to get to 30% tonight, guys. If we could get to 30% tonight, then uh, we'd have a really good shot at meet, meeting our goal. It's going to be a lot harder to meet our goal as the week goes on because everybody's excited at the beginning of it. They're all buying. Um, I bought a couple boxes myself to start it off. Um, I know a bunch of you guys have, but it's going to get harder as the week goes on, so we need to get a bunch sold tonight and tomorrow uh, so we can meet our goal by Memorial Day. All right, so it looks like Eddie's back. Uh, Eddie, I'll ask yeah. No, but Eddie, Eddie's back. Eddie wants to thank everybody. I love you guys. I just have to run and go get my kid. That's the, okay. The, hey. the, they just called me right now uh, that the bus is, is there at the school. Right. So I don't want him feeling bad if he gets there and I'm not no, there and stuff. No, so, no uh, we don't. We would never want that to happen. So uh, I, I Thank you. Next time, I promise, we'll hang whatever. And uh, thank you, everybody, for hanging out for a little bit. And I'm sorry I got to cut out a little early, but. It's all right, Eddie. Hey, we'll see you in Vegas, all right? All right, buddy. All right, have we'll a, see you, brother. Have a great night, guys. Okay, you too. See you, Eddie. All right, buddy. All right, so I want to thank, uh, I want to thank Eddie for being on the show. Uh, it, it was really tricky because he everything seemed like it was going to work for tonight, and then something changed at the last minute. And so, um, so. So it, it, it kind of didn't work out in that regard. But uh, I didn't get to some of these really good questions uh, that I wanted to ask Eddie for you guys. But we'll ask him next time. In the meantime, uh, let's all get ready for uh, Cigar BQ. We're doing it at, at my house. All the dojo guys, dojo crew, there's Matt. Eh. All the dojo crew will be at my house. And then, of course, remember the Pittsburgh thing. And Max Rocket, old, our good buddy uh, uh, Max, he's going to be the host. And have, I don't know if you guys know this, but that dude is a genius chef. He makes some of the most amazing smoked pork and beef you've ever seen in your life. So he's going to be giving some tips and tricks. Uh, we're going to probably be making some mojitos. Maybe we'll go over that recipe that day. Uh, it's just going to be a ton of fun. So please make sure you're there. We're going to be starting about 2 p.m. Um, mountain time, but you can start whenever you want. It goes. There's. It's no rules. It's just all day, hanging out, having fun. So uh, it's it's going to be a blast. Uh, what else do we want to mention, guys? Um, the uh, oh, a lot of people have been asking about the dogma, the the final shipment of dogma. We it should be there anytime. We don't know. We're kind of reliant on uh, Drew Estate sending it to Smoke In. Uh, it should be there hopefully this week. If not, maybe the week after. There's nothing I can do to control that, but uh, there's at least 200 bundles still coming in. And get on that waiting list if, uh, if you want a shot at those bundles. Um, next week on the show, get this. We're going to have our good buddy Santana. Now, most of you have heard of Decrochet Cigars because on the dojo, us dojo guys, we smoke them all the time. We met him in Vegas, and he's this guy. He basically just does it all on his own. This is the most genuine, neat guy you've ever seen in your life. And the cool thing about Santana is his, his, he's totally dedicated to the craft. All he wants to do is make incredible cigars. He doesn't care so much about all his crazy sales or you know wearing crazy suits at, at, at conventions. He's just a regular guy, and he just wants to make great cigars. He's like, he's like a, it's a quest of his. So you're really going to want to tune into the show next week to meet Santana. That'll be a fun show, and then the week after that, we have uh, something planned. I'll, 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 I'll hip you to that as it gets closer. And then in June, get this. I almost don't want to tell you this, but we're we're actually going to have a heavy metal concert on Smoke Night Live. A heavy metal concert on Smoke Night Live, and give away. I'm not a, a huge heavy metal guy, although I was raised in punk rock, but. Uh, we got there's a, some guys that have a really popular band here in Denver, and they make their own cigar. It's called Core Zero Cigars, and they're also in a heavy metal band. 
So we're going to have them on the show. They're going to play you guys a couple songs, and then we're going to give away a bunch of their cigars. And they're good cigars. They're made at the Placentia factory in uh, Esley. So uh, these aren't just some weird, you know, uh, uh, bundled sticks that they threw their bands on. These are really good quality cigars. In fact, we smoked a bunch of them the other night. So uh, you're going to want to tune in for that. Okay, so sorry about the way the show went tonight. It went kind of a little early, but it was really nice that Eddie was able to join us. And fire up a stogie, grab some uh, bourbon, and uh, let's herf the rest of the night, Dojo. So remember, never smoke alone. <laughs>